الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى tells us in سورة آل عمران chapter 3 in verse 18 بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهد الله أنه لا إله إلا هو والملائكة وأول العلم قائما بالقسط لا إله إلا هو العزيز الحكيم Allah witnesses that there is no deity except him and so do the angels and those of knowledge that he is maintaining creation in justice there is no deity except him the exalted in might the wise now shahida to be a witness in in common terms means you witness you saw something and you've been called to recount what you saw so how does Allah Taala witnesses to us, to man, that He is the only deity worth, worthy of worship? That the Quran is His words. That all matters start with Him and end with Him. All matters belong to Him. How does He witness to us that whatever He wants happens and whatever He doesn't want does not happen? How does he witness to us that he is the one God, just, mighty, and wise? Now, the Quran gives us stories, and the stories in the Quran are not meant to be stories. They're illustrations of this concept. Take, for example, the story of uh, Prophet Musa. <clears throat> he was just born. Fir'aun decreed that all children, all male children of the Jews of the children of Israel must be killed. So his mother took him, put him in a box, and put him in the Nile. Now when you say Nile, it's not a little creek. It's a huge river. It's like going to the Mississippi and putting, putting a box in the Mississippi. And, okay, I mean, there's more danger in, in the Nile. But she put him in a box. The box took him. Whose hands led this box? To, you know, to a tree where the branch stopped it and the wife of Pharaoh saw it and got it. Who put the love of that child in her heart that she prevented them from killing him and Pharaoh ended up raising him in his, in his, you know, in his qasr, in his castle. And who made the baby not desire to drink to breastfeed from anyone except his mother. La ilaha illallah. I mean, when, when, you, when you look at, at the story like that, the events of life testify that there is only one God. There is only one in charge of disposing all affairs. There is no randomness. There is no things that conflict. Everything is in order. Everything goes for a purpose, for a wise purpose, for good purpose. There's no randomness. Everything happens, you know, in, in the planning of an entity that's wise, and that's Allah Taala. The story of Prophet Yusuf the same. His brothers wanted to put him down, and Allah wanted them to be Aziz of Masr, to be to be the you know the second in command of of all of you know that area and in the time. Wallahu ghalibun ala amri. If you look at the verse in Surah Yusuf, Wallahu ghalibun ala amri. Whatever Allah wants is what's going to happen. It doesn't matter what anyone else wants, what Allah wants is the only thing that will happen. So events witness that there is no God except Allah wa ta'ala. A knife does not cut out of its own power. Nothing in this universe has its own power. It only takes Allah's permission. It cuts when Allah permits it to cut. And at times Allah says, no, you may not cut. And it did not cut the throat of Ismail. The fire burns with Allah's permission. And if Allah doesn't want it to burn, it will not burn. It did not burn Sayyidina Ibrahim. A woman can have a child out of virgin birth, Sayyidina Maryam. Allah Taala does whatever He wants, and whatever He doesn't want can never happen. It's impossible to happen. So what you know, every event witnesses to the oneness of Allah—that He is one, He is wise, 
and he is powerful, competent, and does whatever he wants. The Quran witnesses this fact too, that Allah is the creator and the Quran is his words. He testifies that. How does that happen? So, we'll come back to that. So on top of that, Allah Taala witnesses himself. And that's enough. When Allah says, I witness to something being true, that's enough. But Allah Taala witnesses himself and that he is just, might, and wise, and the only God worthy of worship. And the Quran witnesses that, if you, if you look at it, the good life for the righteous is Allah's testimony that the Quran is his words. That la ilaha illallah. The bad life for the person who make their income out of usury and out of illegal income and Allah destroys it, that's Allah's witness. Allah is witnessing to that fact and the Quran witnesses to that. The manifestations of Allah's promises and threats in the Quran are a testimony of Allah that the Quran is his book. And he is the, the God worthy of worship. So you have Allah Taala witnessing himself and then he added the, his angels and the people of knowledge. Such a great honor that he would add the people of knowledge to himself. Jalla wa'ala. It is a great honor, but it's only, you know, some people said, wa ulul ilm, they thought of them as the prophets. The prophets are ulul ilm. But other commentators said, no. Any, all believers who have knowledge are included in that, in that verse. That they are raised to such an honor, you know, an honor to be included with the angels and Allah himself. Allah Taala gives health and wealth to everyone. The, the, the ones he like and the ones he doesn't like. Because they don't matter. But he only gives knowledge and wisdom in portions to, to, the, to his beloved servants. The Quran in Surah Taha chapter 20 in the ending of verse 114. Rabbi zidni ilma. And say, my Lord, increase me in, in knowledge. Allah Taala did not instruct his prophet to say, Ya Allah, give me more money, or give me more children, or give me this. or give. He, he focused on one thing, and one thing only, knowledge. That is the most important thing, because if you have knowledge, you can have everything else. Without knowledge, it doesn't matter what you have, you're going to waste it. Knowledge is the most important thing. And Allah raises the ones with knowledge above others who, doesn't, who don't have knowledge or have less knowledge. So if you do want to compete, compete in knowledge. Don't compete in matters of this life or how much money you have or how big your, your bank account or what car you have. How much knowledge you have and how much benefit you have to, to Allah's creation, that's what you compete with. So knowledge is, a great, is the greatest gift that Allah can give to anyone. Seeking knowledge, acquiring knowledge, and teaching it to others. That's what's meant by knowledge. Not just acquiring knowledge for the sake of knowledge. If you don't put it to action, it's worthless. If you don't benefit others with it, it's worthless. So that's what the knowledge, ulul ilm, includes. Acquiring knowledge, practicing it, and teaching it to others. And the knowledge of Allah is the inheritance of the prophets. So if you want part, part of the inheritance of the Prophet, go acquire the knowledge. Learn about Quran, learn about Sunnah. It's all stuff that benefits you in this life and in the hereafter. So if there was a higher honor than knowledge, Allah would have mentioned it. But he singled out knowledge. So we have to pay attention to that, to be included in, in among, you know, with the angels. To be included in that term. We have to seek knowledge. So if you witness, if you testify to Allah's oneness, then you are from ulul ilm. By, by the, the, you know, the, the text of the verse. If you witness, if you are from ulul ilm, you witness that Allah is one. And if you witness that Allah is one, then you are knowledgeable. You are from among the people with knowledge. But that is not enough. 
the ones with knowledge must also witness to others of Allah's oneness. You don't just keep it for yourself. You witness to your family, you witness to your co-workers, you invite others to this, to this faith by witnessing to Allah's wisdom, Allah's power, Allah's majesty, His, His beautiful attributes, the fairness of His commands. You look at the Qur'an, it's all fair. His commands are fair. He did not ask us to do things beyond our capabilities. Whatever Allah asks you to do, it's in your power. He, it, he did not burn overburden you with things. So His commands are fair and just. The Qur'an is just. He is just. His actions are just. So we have to witness to others to that fact. Don't just keep it to yourself. Then you'll be among the ulul ilm that are included in that verse. In Surah Muhammad, chapter 47, in the beginning of verse 19, Allah says, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ So know, O Muhammad, that there is no deity except Allah. لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ that testimony is Tawheed, is, is the foundation of our faith. That's what makes you a Muslim. Testifying that there is only one God, and it is Allah. But the verse did not say, and say Allah is one. Allah, the verse says, Fa'lam, know, know with certainty. And Fa'lam includes seeking that knowledge, you know, researching, studying, Looking at proofs. Prove it for yourself. Don't just take somebody's word for it. Prove it. Work on it. Contemplate Allah's creation. Get to the point where you have 100% certainty that la ilaha illallah. That's what wa'lam annahu, fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah. Do it based on knowledge, not based on somebody told you or that's what you studied in, in school you have to get it for yourself. Imitation in faith is not acceptable. In aqidah. You cannot say, oh, my, my father, my parents, you know, believe in Allah, so I believe. Too. You have to do it for yourself. You have to go in, investigate, contemplate, research, learn. Once you do that, then your faith is 100% certain. After all, how can you say, ashhadu wa la ilaha? How can you witness that there is no God but Allah? If you don't, if you're not 100% certain. In, in regular court, you're a false witness if you're not 100% sure. 99% is not acceptable. You have to be 100% sure when you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. When you bear witness, there is only one God worthy of worship, and it is Allah. You have to be 100% sure, otherwise, you're a liar. So we have to. We have to we have to get to that certainty where we ask Allah alone. There's nobody else other than Allah. Then your focus only goes to Allah. and nobody. You don't, you don't worry about anybody else. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody is plotting. You know, the enemy is this one and my boss wants to get me fired. I don't care about any of this stuff. The focus is Allah. You ask Him alone. You fear Him alone. You hope in Him alone. You rely on Him alone. You realize that no one in existence can benefit or harm you without His permission. That's how the, the Sahaba were like lions. They went into the mouth of, you know, they faced the enemy like lions. Because they knew if they were meant to, to have shahada, that's up to Allah. All they have to do is do their part. And they were like lions. We have to know with certainty that nothing happens in this life. There is no stray bullet. If the bullet hits, it's meant to hit. If it misses, it's meant to miss. There is no stray bullet. There is no accident. It's all by Allah's design. If it meant to happen, it happened. And if it, hap uh, it happened, then Allah allowed it to happen. And if Allah allowed it to happen, it's for good. It for something good. You may understand it or not, but it is for something good because Allah allowed it to happen. Either you were doing something wrong and Allah wanted to stop you, or you were good and Allah wanted to raise your status. We don't know, but we, that's what we have to believe. So when you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, you have to know with 100% certainty 
when we reach that level of Tawheed, then our testimony is accepted, otherwise it's not.